Hi, I'm Park Guy Jason Howell, and welcome to our Commander's Minute. This morning I'm in the Visitor Center. Behind me is a picture of the Loyalists as they cross the bridge the morning of the Battle of Moores Creek Bridge. Um, it's one of the exhibits that you can find here in the Visitor Center. This morning's um, subject is a Loyalist. We start with our Loyalist this morning. It is uh, Major Alan McDonald. Major Alan McDonald arrived in the colony in 1774. He is the husband of the heroine Flora McDonald, who helped the Bonnie Prince Charlie escape after the 45 Rebellion in Scotland. They both arrived here in 1774. Um, Flora McDonald actually helps rally the troops along with her husband, Alan. And he will fight. He will actually be here at the bridge. He never... we. Do not believe he actually crossed over the bridge, but he was here. And he will then retreat with the Loyalists and eventually be captured. He will be sent to prison, to Halifax, Gaul. Um, and I'm not exactly for sure when he was traded for, but he will eventually be traded for for a Patriot commander um, sometime during the war. And then he will uh, return home to Scotland where his wife um, is already uh, Flora McDonald has already returned to. Now, what makes Alan McDonald particularly interesting in this case is um, something that he is wearing in 1774. I'm going to open a can of worms here among um, living historians um, because there is a debate, and for you folks who don't know, there's debate over whether the Loyalist wore kilts. Um, those on the side who suggest that none of the Loyalists wore kilts here always cite a, um, a prisoner of war record. And to be fairly honest, no kilts are mentioned in this record. However, as a historian, it, it kind of leaves different or more questions for someone like me. One, this record or these uh, Loyalists will escape in Philadelphia. They've been transported all the way up to Philadelphia, late October, so it's nine months after the Battle of Moores Creek Bridge. So it's nine months later, are they wearing, still wearing the same clothes they wore at the Battle of Moores Creek Bridge? Uh, also, without, um, with great detail, that is, they describe three of the men from head to toe. The other three men, they describe head to waist with the waist, the garment below the waist as unknown. There's an unknown telling us is it the fact that they forgot exactly what type of pants they're wearing when they describe in great detail their vest and their coats? Or is it the fact that the jailer don't exactly know what the gentlemen are wearing? Or is it a kilt or, or the Highland habit or uh, the you know, Does this jailer know what to write down because I have to admit that I have had visitors come in and ask me oh what is your bagpiper wearing um, and I have to point out that it is killed I'm not to say this is you know modern times we've got all kinds of information out there um, so there's even people today who's going to ask this question so in 1776 it's somebody asking this question um, so and then on the other hand um, we do have evidence of people runaways wearing kilts. We have a, evidence of a piper in Virginia passing by a prominent person's home wearing a kilt. Um, we do have the royal governor in Virginia uh, wearing a kilt on a couple of different occasions. So we know kilts are being worn. The interesting thing about Alan McDonald. The interesting thing about him is when he steps off the boat in 1774, he is described as wearing a, a kilt. So it's not a smoking gun. It doesn't say, oh, there were people here at Moores Creek um, that wore a kilt. But when we look at that prisoner of war record, the six who escaped, that's six of 1,600 men. So... <clears throat> We have to look at this as, well, they're probably not wearing, most of them are probably not wearing kilts, 
but if a few of them are, what do they look like? So that's kind of the way we treat it here at Moores Creek. Um, not to say that any of them were kilts, um, but it is an interesting discussion. Um, one we get quite often here at Moores Creek. I, we will have another but, commander's minute um, tomorrow. Um, and the, tomorrow we're going to discuss Lieutenant Colonel Alexander McLean. Until then, I hope you enjoy this Commander's Minute.